Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to thank Professor Oak for his invitation to join this great conference. Today, I'd like to share with you about my recent work on the valorizing phase to biochar for remediation of persistent organic pollutants. As we all know, conventional waste management such as open waste burning, solid waste net burning may bring air, soil, and water pollution, and even for the greenhouse gas emission. These are also essential for the carbon neutrality. Actually, carbon neutrality is a very important issue for nowadays. Last year, with more than 50 scientists from over eight countries, we organized uh, in the uh, review paper on technology and the perspectives for achieving common neutrality. So today, actually, some of the co-authors also joined our uh, this conference. For this technique, biochar is one of the uh, key technology. Biochar is also important for tackling the carbon footprint of global bio waste. So, um, biochar could be produced with agricultural waste, municipal green waste, and even kitchen waste, and so on. So, it's said um, the site product could be renewable resources like carbon fuel or um, Paris catalyst. So, in addition to the fixed carbon fixation and assimilation, biochar is also used for enhancing plant growth. For me, I'm only focused on the environmental remediation using the biochar. So, I'm only focused on the persistent organic pollutants, short as POPs, and also emerging contaminants like antibiotic resistant gene, short as ARG. So both POPs and the ARGs are an um, important global problem because this is mainly related to the human health. So we have established a technique to prepare biochar using agricultural waste and also allergy to prepare different kinds of biochar. And for this biochar, the mining could remove chemicals through the profiling or PIPA, EDA interaction and so on. We could effect need to reduce the availability of chemicals in the soil. For example, we find with biochar application about four to five times of props were reduced from the contaminated soil to the carousel and leaves grow in these kind of contaminated soils. For this um, contamination removal, so the temperature is a key factor to influence the effect. The Temperature for preparing of the biochar has a key role. So ten, low temperature biochar may bring more nutrition than to increase the microbial activity to enhance the dissipation of contaminants in the soil. Whereas high temperature biochar due to its higher sorption capacity, so it many reduce the availability of contaminants in the soil where immobilization. We also find some rhizosphere degradation is a hot spot for dissipation of the chemicals in the soil system. Especially in the 2 mm near rhizosphere, it shows the highest dissipation than the rhizosphere and of course than the fall rhizosphere. For this rhizosphere remove, this is mainly because the biochar and also the root exudates they could combine to enhance 
the microbial thalamus and the enzyme activity as also the genoa and functional gene associated with the chemical degradation. So this combination may result in the enhanced dissipation of chemical in the contaminated soil. We also try to use biochar combined with compost to reduce the mobility of pulps from the soil to plant. And this is also due to the combination of the absorption of biochar for the chemicals and also the compost bring the nutrition for the enhanced microbial degradation activity on the chemicals in the soil. And we even use the biochar with the heat accumulator to tackle the contaminated soil by metals and antibiotics. For this, we find for its um, Huber accumulator, it of course increases the metals transfer from the soil to the plant and accumulating inside. But this showed no significant difference between the um, of the antibiotic in the soil with and without the plant. But with the biochar addition, and this indeed reduce the concentration of the antibiotics in the plant stem and leaves. And for the antibiotic resistant gene, it shows a quite similar effect so with the biochar actually it increased the detect lumber abundance in the soil, but it decreased the abundance and the numbers of energy in the stems and leaves. This shows that so the combination of biochar and the hemicuter could be a potential strategy to reduce the transfer of energy in the soil to the plant. And in the agriculture field, so wastewater irrigation is a potential uh, source of the um, uh, contamination source. So we try to use the biochar combined with the quaternary phosphorum salt to tackle the antibiotic resistant host bacteria and also the vector of um, DNA which is a kind of the vector for transmission of ARG. And we see that using the swine and chicken with water, this um, material could remove about 99% of ARG from the wastewater just for one um, treatment. So this actually shows a very high uh, remove efficiency. So for this remove, this is mainly because for the bacterial, uh, especially for the ARG host bacterial, like the pathogen, so this kind of material could absorb on the bacterial through the static uh, absorption, and then with the um, radical produced by the uh, material, then it could oxidize the uh, bacterial and then to even the small particle, particle could penetrate into the cells and then to kill the bacterial, to break down the bacterial cells. And for the DNA, axonal DNA, this is a kind of vector for the transmission of ARG. So this material could also uh, um, to remove the DNA. This is mainly because the, bacteria, the material could absorb DNA through this static absorption and then with um, hydroxy radical produced bac bacteria could oxidize the bacteria, especially for the uh, oxidize the DNA, especially for the backbone of the DNA to fragment the DNA to small uh, pieces and rods to destroy the vector for the transmission of ARG. 
uh, we also use biochar combined with fish to reduce the transfer of ARG and the pathogen from the contaminated soil to the plant. And we all use this um, biochar combined with fish to reduce the transfer of ARG and the pathogen transfer from the surface soil to ground water. Um, actually, we have talked a lot about the advantage of biochar, actually, but when we apply the biochar in the field, we shall think a lot of different uh, factors about the field concentration, field condition and chemicals and so on. For example, when we work on the antibiotics, we find biochar application could effectively reduce almost um, almost nine, more than 90% of the nutrient of um, tetracycline and the sulfur methacine. However, for the oxytetracycline, it shows opposite effect. Application of biota even increased 10 times of nutrient of this chemical from the soil to groundwater. This is because for the oxy texacycline, when we apply it in the acidic soil, as then the biochar could increase the pH values and then to increase the solubility of the chemical because and in the higher pH values, it could be more soluble for this. The species is more soluble and then uh, has a higher mobility. Therefore, when we apply biochar in the field, we shall be careful about what kind of soil and what condition and even what chemical we are working with. I try to make sure we apply the biochar could safely um, help the bioremediation of the contaminated soil or environment. Finally, I would like to thank my um, students, my colleagues for their hard work. I would also like to thank the founding body of National, National Natural Science Foundation of China. And finally, I would like to thank you for your attention.